Secondly, as we've mentioned before, and you guys can refer back to some of the previous videos, we know many names and attributes of God. So God from the Islamic perspective isn't just love and mercy as according to the Christians. We believe Allah has many names and attributes and one of his names is, is that he is Al-Hakim, the wise. And therefore there is wisdom behind things that happen in this life. And therefore there is wisdom behind the suffering and the evil we experience in this life. Now just because we as limited human beings with limitations, our, cogn our cogn cognitive faculties also have limitations, just because we cannot understand the wisdom behind everything that takes place within our lives and around us in the world, it doesn't mean that there is no wisdom there. And I mean, I, I'm sorry, but I feel like we've covered this before just with the Christian but recently on a live stream, uh, you know, we looked at uh, what do you mean? Who's a Christian uh, apologist here on YouTube? And this is the exact argument he gave for why God allows children to have cancer. If God created the entire universe and he knows everything, everything there is to know, then he would also know how everything must go together for the greater good, even if we couldn't see it or comprehend it. Now, just because we as limited human beings with limitations, our, cogn our cogn cognitive faculties also have limitations, just because we cannot understand the wisdom behind everything that takes place within our lives and around us in the world, it doesn't mean that there is no wisdom there. I mean, this isn't different from Christian apologetics. This is the same thing. I like how we started out this section by trying to differentiate Islam from Christianity in that both Islam and Christianity preach a God that's of love and mercy, like an all-loving God, an all-merciful God. But where apparently he thinks that it differentiates with uh, Christianity is that, oh, God is also wise all knowing. And so just because we can't understand why he would cause this needless suffering, uh, that doesn't mean that he's necessarily evil or anything like that. It just means that we don't know why he's causing the suffering or why this suffering is happening. This is the exact argument that Christian apologists make. How much more would it be for an infinite God that knows literally everything? Therefore, we couldn't possibly know all of the reasons for why God allows suffering to happen. You're no different than a Christian apologist. You just have a different God or, well, sorry, excuse me, not a different God, just a different version kind of of the same God. I mean, it's the it's the same God of the Jews. It's the same God of the Christians. It's just you guys think that he's different in some way. But all the apologetics that apologists like Imram here use for the Islamic God are going to be the exact same kind of apologetics that Christians use for the Christian God, because they're the same one. That would be arguing from ignorance, as Hamza highlights in his book, right? Because what you're saying is, I can't see the wisdom, and that therefore there is no wisdom. No, you can't see the wisdom, but there is wisdom. Now, just because you can't see it, it doesn't mean it's not there. You, you, we have to acknowledge as human beings, we have, we have limitations, right? We, exp we pass through time, serial time from past to present and to the future, and we cannot jump out of this, this type of experience of time. And therefore, it is almost impossible for us to understand the wisdom behind everything bad that happens to us. I get what... Imram saying here. I really do. I mean, we don't know why needless suffering happens. So that doesn't mean, uh, according to Imram and uh, John McRae over there on what he mean, there could be good reasons for needless suffering in this reality. I, I don't know what those reasons would be. And I don't know what could ever compel me to argue that needless suffering in the form of pediatric cancer uh, raped little kids, uh, any, any other, any other needless suffering that has happened in the past. I don't know what would compel me to argue that it was a good thing that that happened. Like it's a good thing that those things happened to those people because of this reason. Also, if I can figure out some way around like the needless suffering in this world and still accomplish whatever in the fuck God 
was supposed to accomplish with something, then God could definitely come up with an infinitely better plan than I could. So if I don't see the necessity for needless suffering in this universe and that we can accomplish things without needless suffering, I'm fairly certain that God could do it too if he were to exist. That ultimately makes God either a dick bag, which doesn't match with any of the Abrahamic descriptions of God, or he doesn't exist. Again, on, that's only concerning these particular definitions of God. Now, if there were a God to ever exist, obviously he's apathetic about our existence. If he does exist out there, he just doesn't give a shit. Nature is apathetic to our existence or the existence of any living creature. It doesn't have a mind of its own. It doesn't care if we suffer or anything like that. And that's far more parsimonious uh, with you know what we experience in reality than some all loving God that is somehow omni benevolent. And it, you know, this whole understanding of nature being apathetic to our suffering also doesn't compel me to make uh, arguments for why children need to have pediatric cancer or other needless suffering to happen in our world. It doesn't compel me to say that there's a good reason for that shit. However, sometimes something bad may happen to us. A few months or years may go by and then we reflect upon that event and then we realize, ah, if that didn't happen to me, I wouldn't be here today. Why does this happen? Why does this realization take place? It's because now we have traversed time, right? So we've now traversed time and we can look back and therefore we now have the knowledge to connect those dots properly and understand why that happened to us. But in the moment, we can't do that because we don't have knowledge of the future. So again, I get what he's saying here, and I do agree that uh, humans are very adaptable and we can adapt to shitty situations and, you know, we can come out on the other side of that uh, either in a better position or in a worse position. I mean, I've had multiple instances of that in my life, but again, it's because humans are adaptable. Uh, we can adapt to our environment, adapt to our surroundings, adapt to our circumstances. But the point is, is that this God is supposedly all knowing uh, he is everywhere and it, he's all loving, all good and all this other stuff, right? Whatever's happened to me in my life that I would consider suffering, I can guarantee you there are far better ways to accomplish that without the needless suffering. There's far better ways to accomplish anything in this world without the needless suffering. So just because you can rationalize how this needless suffering may have positively affected your future or how you turned a, uh, you know, a lemon into lemonade, but that doesn't mean that you could have accomplished that particular feat of making a nice lemony beverage in a different way, in different circumstances that that did not include needless suffering. You're retroactively rationalizing why bad shit occurred and connecting it with your current situation. That's not the same thing as God allowing needless suffering, and that makes him a dick, which breaks your particular definition of God. A beautiful example of this is the story of Musa and Khidr. Right? Khidr does many things that Musa, according to his Sharia, they just don't make sense, and he asks him, he challenges him. And then at the end of the journey together, Khidr lets him in on the knowledge that he had, why he did those things, and what the positive future outcomes are going to be so that evil and suffering manifests as a test then you know are we going to be patient are we going to rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are we going to trust our creator knowing that he wants best for us and that ultimately whatever we're going through good is going to come out of this I mean still uh, whether or not good comes out of it is regardless of uh, of the fact that that needless suffering didn't have to happen. True, there are certain situations where good does result from bad or, or, or needless suffering. I get that. It happens. But you're myopically focusing on those particular outcomes because for every outcome 
of, of, of needless suffering that ends up in a good position for somebody, it ends up in a bad position for other people. Those children that are currently uh, or in the past uh, been raped by the Catholic Church or by Christian churches or by anybody anywhere, not all of them have come out on the other side of that like in, be- in a better position. Some of them remain broken and uh, abused for the rest of their life. Some of them end up taking their own lives because they can't handle it. And it's not that they have lost sight of God or that they stop believing in God. People that are religious in general do end up committing suicide sometimes. And it's because of this needless suffering. Uh, You acting like the good results of suffering are the only results that matter just shows how myopic you are and how much cherry picking you're having to go through in order to make this argument work. So this is just a quick sort of breakdown of just highlighting to you how from an Islamic perspective the problem of evil really breaks down. It really is just a problem for the modernists. Those individuals that that have this conception of a worldly utopia material progress, trials and tribulations from their perspective are barriers. They're just barriers to progress, worldly progress. From an Islamic perspective we have a different outlook. We have a totally different paradigm. Right? So now that problem doesn't, that problem of evil breaks down. Therefore, I don't think that it breaks down. Like, I don't think that the problem of evil is just not a problem for Islam. Like I said before, the arguments that you've brought up here are the exact same arguments that Christians use, and Christians still have a problem with the problem of evil. They still haven't overcome the problem of evil, and it still compels apologists like Imram and John McRae uh, to basically say that there's a good reason for needless suffering, like cancer or the rape of young children like it causes people like these apologists to say these horrible and deplorable things uh as if it's a good thing for somebody to go through this suffering and i just i can't see anything ever (laughs) compelling me to do the same thing so i feel like there is still a problem with evil in these definitions of god we have to ask the question does atheism even really exist in a intelligent, rational, logical sense? Well, yes, obviously it does. I mean, I just sat here and thought through your entire argument against the problem of evil, and you still have a problem with evil. I mean, this, it, this is me rationalizing my way through your argument against it. And so does atheism still exist as a rational position? Of course it fucking does, because there are no arguments produced by apologists that actually hold up to scrutiny. So how can you say that does atheism even exist as a rational position when apologists haven't even put forth a good reason to believe in a God? Now, that's not to say that they haven't convinced some people that God exists or anything like that. But when you have a growing demographic of people that are not buying your bullshit and people are regularly leaving your religion for no religion at all, it's kind of hard to say that, oh, does it even exist anymore?